What a great basketball town this Spokane is. And of course, the Gonzaga Bulldogs right in the middle of it. Santa Clara and Gonzaga. Starting lineups, Dan Dickow. We talked about Pajemski, but Keyshawn Justice is a three-point threat for Santa Clara. Leads the conference in May threes and threes per game. And the backcourt pretty darn good for the Bulldogs as well. For the first time in the kennel, ladies and gentlemen. Step up, limit Gonzaga in transition. They lead the country in scoring due to Zags. For Gonzaga, no second chance opportunities. Santa Clara almost 10 offensive rebounds per game and put foul pressure on Santa Clara. They're one of the best in the country at not fouling. First possession, Santa Clara. Carlos Stewart in the backcourt with Keyshawn Justin. And Brandon Pajemski. Mediaco kicks. This is Parker Brown. Stewart, good three-point shooter, and he hammers one home. And Santa Clara is off to a 3-0 start. Right back up the floor. Gonzaga likes to push it. They score a lot of points. One of the best offensive teams in the country. And Watson in tight has the first bucket for the Bulldogs. A staple of Gonzaga's offense for literally the past 25 years. High-low look. Timmy to Watson that time. Many times it'll be reversed. Watson to Timmy. Timmy goes down. Stewart, another three. This one is off. Bediaco reaching over and picking up the foul. Carlos Stewart. He is the point guard, but he's more of a attack mentality in pick and rolls where he wants to find a crack to be able to get a shot off himself. He knocks down that three. Then the high low from Gonzaga we spoke of a second ago. Some have said that Gonzaga looks vulnerable right now. But heck, they're, they're 12th in the AP. They're number 12 in the net. If that's vulnerable, there's a whole lot of teams that would sign up for that this year. They did lose two NBA draft picks last year. Bolton the miss, and Timmy the follow. Somebody goes to contest a shot. Guards have to crack down and block out. They didn't that time, allowing Timmy the wide open and easy putback. Pajemski hardly played at Illinois last year. 16 games, he averaged just one point a game. A runner in the lane, and he gets that in and out. And Bediaco lost the rebound. Nolan Hickman in transition. Bolton. Majemski can score at all three levels. Justice, good shot fake, not a good pass though. Shot clock at five. Majemski, another runner, may have forced it. Brown has the rebound, no reset on the shot clock. And it's a Gonzaga ball. Good defense from Gonzaga. You will see them switch a lot, especially in late clock situations, because Watson can guard literally one through five. He switches on to Pajemski, able to force Pajemski into a difficult shot. Bolton in a roll and a layup. Watson. They are engaged now. 8-3, Gonzaga, back at 30. Timmy on the low block, but they are really good in pick-and-roll situations. You have to honor Timmy on the duck-in. Oh, opens up over the top. First two words out of Herb Sendek's mouth today when we met with him were poise and composure. That, he said, is the most important thing for his team tonight. Timmy is guarding Justice right now. Lob for Brown, not a good pass. And a steal. Stewart keeps it alive. Pajemski doubles. Brown against Timmy. Up and under, and he missed it. Hickman, Stewart again knocked it loose. Gives it back. Justice a three. Yes! That's a big sequence for Santa Clara. Looks like the officials pointed at his feet, so it might have been a two. We'll have to check that. But dangerous opportunity in transition to give up a three. That's a three by Strother. And it was indeed a two for Justice. And a 
six point Gonzaga lead. Justice driving and scoring. Justice seems as if he's been in this league forever. <laughs> Took advantage of his COVID year, so it's his fifth year. He is about to become Santa Clara's all-time games leader. Bediaco leaning on Timmy just to make sure. Foot is on the line. Good eyes by the officials. Good eyes by the officials. Good camera work from our crew. Drew Timmy soaked up a lot of fouls in the first meeting between these two. They ran three big bodies at him. Bediaco is now on the bench with two already. So much is talked about Drew Timmy's scoring ability, but it, the foul pressure that he puts on allows others to get to the free throw line as well. Christoph Tilly pokes it loose, and Stewart is fouled going in for a layup. And Santa Clara's got free throws when we get back. Underway in Spokane. He was a baseball player growing up. He actually started at the five. That was his first position. So he watched guys like Chris Bosch, lefties. Then he started to model his game after Tyler Hero. And then adding to that mix of athleticism, guys, junior high school, he goes, I need to get tougher. So he played football, played safety and wide receiver. So now he's he's got the full complement. He does, Evan, and it's amazing. I don't know that Santa Clara exactly knew what they had when they opened the portal and he stepped through. He didn't play in, in but half of the games at Illinois last year. He scored he scored more points in his first game <laughs> yeah, he this did. year than he did all year last year for Illinois. He's got three 30-point games. Three-point lead. Hickman rises and hits. Gonzaga is hot for the field to start with. They are six of seven. Brett Napper into the ball game for Santa Clara at the point. This is Christoph Tilly. Gonzaga's going to dare him to shoot that. You can see the interior defense was sitting back in the paint. It's Tilly, who's a rather... Timmy, who's, I believe, fouled by Tilly. Tilly and Timmy? Say that. And not to be <laughs> confused with Killian Tilly. Tillian, great former Zag, spent some time in the NBA with the Memphis Grizzlies. Currently back in his home country of France. If you're listening, Killian, keep getting healthy. Hickman waiting for a scream from Watson. Strother. Portland really didn't guard him much on the outside. And as you pointed out, he torched him for eight threes. And a few of those just floaters from 10, 12 feet. Well, he hit those eight threes against the Pilots, as you mentioned. But he, I thought he had a nice recognition when they closed out and took away the three. One dribble to that quick little floater. It's a difficult shot to guard. Pajemski. That's his first three. He shoots 42% from distance. He's hit 50 threes this year. Hickman, Timmy against Tilly again. And that's another foul, and already two bigs have used four fouls on Timmy. Just put so much pressure on you. Get another look at Julian Strother. A nice job coming off the pick and roll tight and then creating the contact to be able to bounce out and find some space. But Pajemski, you got to guard him. You can't switch out and keep your hands down because he will make you pay. Watson, hometown kid, backing in, kick out. Malachi Smith in the ball game, lost it. Santa Clara taken back. Bolton, Smith. Two tips. Watson. This time it's Tilly against Timmy with a jump hook. Nicely done. Nice patience on the low block. Check to make sure no double was coming. Early in his career, he shouldn't see a lot of doubles. So take your time, get to your spot, shoot him with confidence. 
Timmy turning, missing. Pajemski, good rebounding guard. He does everything really well. Justice has hit a three for Santa Clara. Napper, Justice again. Long tip. Bolton. My goodness, how hot is Gonzaga to start this game? Justice misses another three. Bulldogs are 9 of 13. And a Santa Clara foul. Bolton knocks down a three on the previous possession. Is able to see a crack in transition. Attack the rim to get the free throw line on the next opportunity. But that is so difficult to guard when you have a four like Watson or on occasion a five like Timmy pushing the ball down the floor that can make the correct decision, such as finding the trailing Bolton for a three. Bolton's free throw is good. This is one of the great home courts in all of college basketball. Bulldogs had that long streak ended. These are teams of the West Coast Conference, and these are the number of games Gonzaga has won in a row against them on this floor. 32 for San Francisco. Santa Clara sits at 15. Of course, Loyola Marymount beat Mark Few with the Bulldogs by one in a thriller about two weeks ago. The lead is eight. Stewart's back in the ball game. Justice has missed his last two threes. Napper. Justice driving. And falling away, and it won't go. Bulldogs pushing tempo still. Ben Craig. One of the young bigs for Gonzaga in right now. Trying to post up. Efton Reed also in. So Timmy gets a, a rest. Schroeder launches. Greg. That's where he brings so much value to this team because he doesn't allow a blockout. He's in constant motion for a big. That's rare to find. He had eight rebounds in the first matchup a month ago. I think Reed and Greg blocked that shot. <laughs> Tag team on the block. Strother with a mid. For assistant coaching position in the West Coast Conference, they must include a minority candidate in the final group, not just a hi, how are you? And it's been very impactful over the, the three years that they've implemented it. And thanks for the shirts, by the way. Proud to wear them. Santa Clara needs some buckets here. Majemski with a runner. Missed it. Ball's tipped. Broncos keep the possession. Broncos are not a great shooting team, but they're a really good rebounding team, and they shoot in bulk, so if they get a lot of threes up, they're at least going to make 35% of them. Pajemski spinning. The shot's blocked, but a foul on Smith. That looked like pretty good defense. That looked like pretty good defense there by Malachi Smith up top. They stayed down. Maybe got him a little bit on the wrist as Pajemski had to get a shot up with the shot clock winding down. But he is just such a difficult cover because he can score at all three levels. He's not afraid to initiate contact as an offensive player. And a challenge for Mark Few. If you ask Mark Few, hey, what's the difference between this year's team and last year's team? He starts with defense. I mean, the, Gonzaga's a dynamic offensive team still, but they are not at the level defensively that they were last year. And a lot of that is the loss of Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren was the perfect eraser on the interior. Was blocking shots, altering shots, but he could also switch out on the perimeter and keep guys in front. Bolton gets that one to drop. He's off to a terrific start. Bolton, a quick eight points. Gonzaga's only got 11 of 16 to open this game from the field. Well, you mentioned the defensive differences from a season ago. The offense never changes at Gonzaga. Three of the last five years, they've been the most efficient offense in the country when you look at Ken Palm analytics. 
The one thing they don't have is Andrew Nemhard, right? I mean, one of the great point guards in Gonzaga history. I mean, he made things so easy on everybody the last couple seasons ago. Jalen Suggs got a lot of attention the year they lost to Baylor in the title game, and rightfully so, he's a great player. But every big possession that year, the ball was in Andrew Nemhard's hands. And you can see it because of the great season he's having as a rookie with the Pacers. Shot clock violation, and that's poise and composure that Herb Sendek talked about. But this is a Santa Clara team that has enough firepower to kick it into gear. You got Keyshawn Justice and Carlos Stewart, and of course, Pajemski. Timmy comes back in the game. Well, that was a difficult possession for Santa Clara. Stewart checks in during that baseline out of bounds with low clock. You've got to have better communication so all five guys know what the situation and scenario is with the shot clock winding down. Santa Clara also playing without a couple guys. Jordan Williams, a, a junior guard out with a knee injury. Carlos Marshall Jr., a scorer that came in. And he has a shoulder injury. He's out for the season as well. So they're not at full strength. This is Greg straight on. He's starting to grow up, Dan Dicko. He's been playing really well in conference play. The energy I talked about, but he provides a big who can shoot it beyond the arc. Watson and Timmy, not great shooters, but Greg will stretch the defense. He's getting better at understanding, making plays in the high-low situations as well. Kozi Akametsu with the ball off the bench. Akametsu crossing over. Talented kid, stumbles and walks. Another great defensive possession not just by the ball club but individually with malachi smith stayed down on pajemski a few possessions ago that time slides his feet takes the charge he's been a great addition to gonzaga can really shoot it from beyond the three-point arc yeah he was known as a scorer coming in from chattanooga he led the socon in scoring last year but he can certainly play defense well, it goes to the type of players that if you come to Gonzaga out of high school or in the transfer portal, you have to understand and accept your role. Malachi Smith has done that. Stewart is fouled. For Gonzaga. Just their third team foul. 28-14 start, number 12 team in the country. The number two team in the West Coast Conference. They trail St. Mary's by a game. And of course, Gonzaga and St. Mary's play on Saturday night in Moraga for the first time this year. That is going to be a fascinating watch. St. Mary's doesn't get the credit nationally I think they deserve. They have become a tremendous program under Randy Bennett. Gonzaga's won the last 10 conference titles. If they go down and lose in Moraga, it's looking like that streak may be snapped. Hunter Salas into the game. 13 of 19, Gonzaga is shooting right now. Stewart falling away, hits a shot. And that snaps what was a 13-1 run. Santa Clara needs some traction here. They had a 15-point lead in that game a month ago. And then Gonzaga caught him in the second half and beat him at the end. Justice has the rebound. Carlos Stewart in transition. Wow. Whoa! Spinning but didn't get it to drop. Greg has the rebound. Stewart fouls. And that is Stewart's issue at times. He's very talented. He's very athletic. He's still learning to control playing with speed, playing at pace. We got another look at that tremendous move in transition where he couldn't finish. But as the ball goes in the outlet, he breaks on it like a defensive back. Sometimes you have to understand the right play is just to get back on defense. 16 fouls on Santa Clara. Look at the shooting for Gonzaga right now. 10 of 14. They're 52% on the season, 38% from distance. Once again, they lead the country in field goal percentage. A lot of it's due to Timmy at over 60%, but they just take good shots. They don't get out of character. They don't get sped up by their opponents. Timmy stepping through high degree of difficulty. 14-point deficit, Santa Clara trying to chip away. 
LMU had a little bit of the recipe to slow down Timmy with the size on the interior. Santa Clara has a lot of that with Betty Ako and Brown as well. Pajemski all of a sudden struggling from the field. He's one of five in the ball game. Now Timmy will spin it. And miss it. Betty Ako the rebound. Timmy got caught looking for contact that time to be bailed out from the official. Catch and shoot, and that's a three, and that's Stewart. Strother around the screen. Coming off a 40, a 40 point game at Portland. Smith. Kobe. Shot clock down. Strother. And a couple of good defensive stops for Santa Clara. Stewart again. Santa Clara just three of eight from three, seven of 20 from the field. And Salas. Draws contact. Even Ben Gregg is shooting it tonight. The big kid out of Clackamas, Oregon. It's to go. The biggest little thing that he does is defend. And Mark Few, I asked him, all right, looking at Santa Clara, who would you like Watson to guard? He says, I'll take Anton <laughs> Watson on anybody, any position. One through five. Evan? Thirty-one nineteen. Evan Washburn. Well, Rich, just getting a word from that Gonzaga huddle. The priority offensively, they want more ball movement. Playing with that pace, too much isolation despite this lead. Defensively, contest everything down the stretch. As you guys know, this Gonzaga team, they've let some teams back in games despite some big early leads. All right, thank you, Evan. This is silly. And with the left hand, he misses. Gonzaga doing a nice job on the boards right now. Plus four, rebound. Watson. Bediakos back in with his two fouls. Salas. And that misses badly. It's going to stay with Gonzaga. Shot clock did not reset. There's five to shoot. This is where you have to be connected as a team and communicate out. Short clock situation. Watson takes the three. And it's a shot clock violation. And that's part of, with this lineup for Gonzaga on the floor right now, there is not a true point guard. Bolton and Salas both play it at times, but you can see Coach Hugh not happy point guard has got to be connected with the coach and be able to relay any message or know what the coach is thinking and relay a message without having the coach say anything. Let's see if Santa Clara has a run in them right now. Stewart, man in his face, hits from 18. Very talented scorer. Strong, he's explosive, he can change directions. And on that one, you see his elevation and jump shot situation. Bolton with the drive. The transfer from Iowa State, Rashir Bolton. And maybe the most popular player in this community in terms of getting out in the community. He's incredible in all the charitable stuff, his foundation. That's a reaching foul on Hunter Salas. So many times you push in transition, and then you can just flow into offense. That time, a little pitch ahead. Gets it back to Bolton with the big ceiling. It creates almost pick and roll action. Bolton takes advantage, gets to the rim. Parker Brown back in for Santa Clara. Pajemski, a cold start. He's one of five. Stewart with 11 points is four of seven. High, low, nice look, and Brown is fouled. Terrific pass there from Tilly, an equally good seal from Brown. Good high, low look. Brown will be at the line for a pair of free throws. 
older brother, Christian Braun. Played in Kansas, now having a nice rookie season with the Denver Nuggets. Parker transferred from Missouri. Draft night was a, a family affair for the Browns. I'm actually wrong. It's his younger brother, not his older brother, uh, who's in the end. schedule. They were home the entire month of December. This is just the fifth true road game for Herb Sendak and the Broncos. And a lot of teams have made and put together schedules similarly because you're trying to manipulate the net to a certain extent to provide opportunities for you to maybe be in the NCAA tournament uh, conversation. A neutral site win gives you more opportunities than a uh, home win against good teams. Short to Strother, rebound to Smith. They don't. Santa Clara does not want to give Smith a clean look at a three. Got it up. Pajemski, the rebound, and it's a tie up. And this is Gonzaga's arrow. And so far, this is Gonzaga's night. Red hot start, 52% from the field in a 12. Like John Stockton, but in all actuality, they've had more pros on the interior than on the perimeter. And they have continued this season by making it a focal point of dominating the interior. One of those bigs is just having a marvelous season in Sacramento, Mr. Sabonis. He's primed and poised for another all-star season. I, mean, I saw him the first month on campus as a freshman, and you could just tell he was going to be special. Just the way he understood angles, space, and timing, cut screens, all of that. That's a really creative pick and roll, and it gives Watson a 12-footer, and he hits it. And the great shooting continues for the Bulldogs. And Watson's been perfect, as you see. Stewart, there's a little pick and roll. Tilly put it on the ground, and then misses on the hook. The Bulldogs shooting... Right around 36% from the field. Timmy's one of five. Timmy's two of six. Well, it's only a matter of time before he gets going. He is too good of a player, and Gonzaga runs too many actions for him to be quiet throughout the night. For Santa Clara, your goal is to push his touches as far away from basket as you can and make him score over a hand. In the last 11 minutes, Carlos Stewart is the only Bronco with a field goal. He misses a three. Pajemski. It'll stay with Santa Clara. It'll be a baseline out of bounds with 18. Timmy with the left hand. 18 on the shot clock. Good recovery from Timmy there, but it shows you Pajemski's versatility, his ability to not back down and get on the offensive glass. They desperately need points from him tonight. Justice is held. Sixteen foul on Gonzaga. No free throws yet. How do you get? I mean, you we're watching Pajemski and Mark Few talked about him today and that the troubles and the, the challenge of defending him, but right now he's just one of six for the field. Well, it's only a matter of time before he gets on track. He's too good of a player at 38 in the loss to Pacific last week, but they put him in situations where he's going to have chances to score. Strouder had the steal, gets into the lane, and stays with the Bulldogs. It looked like it, it did go off the leg of Parker Brown. But Iaco's got two fouls. Timmy short on that. Pajemski, Brown steps into it. Parker Brown with the miss. Smith gets in. Timmy. Strother. 
Stewart has the steal. It's a rare break for Santa Clara. The rim turned away. Bolton, and the follow is good. Stewart knows one speed, yes. <laughs> and that is fifth gear. He is quick, he's explosive. I mean, he got up off the canvas pretty quickly there. He's been impressive. He's put together a really nice sophomore campaign where he's averaging 15 a game. Pajemski fouls Watson. Well, Gonzaga's doing it right now without Drew Timmy, who has four points. He's two of seven from the field. This is the all-time list, and we'll talk about the great Frank Burgess as the night goes along. 2,196. Burgess did it in three seasons. He played when freshmen were ineligible. And, of course, Timmy... He actually has another season if he wants it next year. His COVID season. This is year four for him. And the great Jim McPhee is in the house tonight. Former Gonzaga great. Biggest lead has been 16. Pajemski. Ball was not online. Might have been the best look he's got yet. A terrific job coming off the down screen. Just couldn't get squared up and on balance to knock it down. He's got three 30 point games this year. How about this? His first two games after hardly playing the season to go at Illinois, he goes for back to back 30 point games to start the season. Smith up and in. Malachi Smith's been a nice addition. Transferring in from Chattanooga. Watson. And it's falling apart right now for Santa Clara. Well, this crowd after the loss to LNU was looking to help the Zags get back on track. Plays like that will help keep them energized throughout the game. Stewart. Strother the rebound, an exceptional first half of basketball for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Number 12 in the country, though number two in the West Coast Conference. And the Bulldogs. Teams in the conference, but that wasn't the case in the first half. They have to be better on the offensive glass again. That was the message out of the Santa Clara locker room. You're right, Evan, and you could just see the look on Herb Sendek's face right now. The kind of frustration. And at the same time, you're watching one of the best teams in the country play like it was Gonzaga. Carlos Stewart had the best first half for the Broncos. 13 points, 5 of 11, 3 rebounds, 3 assists. Justice, their three-point shooter. Bediaco, shot clock is down. Got to get it up. Justice does. Catch and shoot and hit. Just like that. Leading three-point shooter in the conference didn't knock one down in the first half, but you know he's going to get opportunities. Bolton driving, blocked Braun at the rim. Pajenski can't pick it up. No reset on the clock. Corner three. Last year, Bolton has come to play this evening. 13 points. Been a little inconsistent at times this year, but he is a tremendous asset for this Bulldog basketball team. Justice, he's a Wisconsin native. That helped when Pajemski decided to, to transfer to Santa Clara. He's a Wisconsin guy. And Stewart, it's a bucket. He's got 15. And the Broncos come out and try to, to cut into this enormous... Gonzaga lead. Bolton round of screen. Lob for Timmy. Good catch. Great finish. Bediaco <laughs> and Timmy fouls him. Timmy had a, a rough first half and he's 
He's two points now from that magic number of 2,000 in his career. Well, I thought Santa Clara did a really nice job defensively on him using their size. But in pick and roll situations, when the ball handler comes off and creates a problem for the defense, you have to take care of it. When they do that, it opens up lobs, pocket passes to the big, such as Timmy. When Carlos Stewart sets his sights on the bucket, that's, it's hard to slow him down. He has been in attack mode all evening long, 17 points. He was Mr. Basketball Gatorade State Player of the Year in Louisiana. That's just too easy right now. Points in the paint, just an enormous lead in that category. Look at that, 32 to 6. And a nifty move by Brown with a left hand. And, and Santa Clara, you know, starts two bigs. They play a more traditional lineup as some of the other teams in the WCC. I mean, Pacific now is essentially going four or five guards, spacing it, shooting a lot of threes. Stewart trying to advance it. Strother got a hand on it. And Gonzaga has the basketball. And he keeps that big lead three minutes in. Second half, if you're just joining us, Gonzaga won their last two games, but it wasn't easy. Runner there by Nolan Hickman. Of course, the last time on this floor, Loyola Marymount snapped that long, long home court win streak. Stewart. I'll tell you what, this guy. Wow. This guy, this sophomore can really play. He talked to us during shoot around, and he said... They have to keep their composure, but they also have to play aggressive. He has done both. Stewart's going to get a, a foul there. For more on Carlos Stewart, let's go to Evan Washburn. Evan? Well, guys, I thought Mark Few had some pretty impressive words for Stewart as well, saying he defies analytics. I mean, he's had plenty of threes in this game, but he was discussing the fact that if you give him twos, he'll, he'll make them consistently. We've seen that over the course of this game. I mean, that's a great point because so often, you know, both coaches talk today about the importance not of the three, but uh, of making your two. Steal by Justice. It's going to take a transition three and miss it. Wow, they had numbers, and this is the result. A Timmy Brown. A little celebratory. And that's 2,000 for Drew Timmy. He's still third. Closing in on second on the all-time Gonzaga list. And Timmy going to pick up the foul. Drew Timmy will go down as one of the all-time greats. And then eventually, this is extremely impressive. A United States district judge kind of personifies more than an athlete, fellas. Absolutely. Now, Dan Dickow, you came through this program. You still live here in Spokane, and his legacy, Frank Burgess, is to, is still runs pretty deep. Without a doubt. I mean, it's unbelievable. I haven't touched on what he did off the court, but I mean, if you just look at the numbers, he scored all those 2,196 points in three seasons. That was when freshmen were ineligible. Hickman back to Timmy. Such a difficult ask to guard that pick and roll. Hickman comes off tight. Pocket pass to Timmy, who's got that little catch and floater down as well as anybody in the college game. Napper drives. And he makes it. I think that the Gonzaga player that probably has the most difficult job this year is probably Nolan Hickman, right? I mean, there's such a long stable of great point guards and, and recent point guards. Nemhart, Suggs, Nigel Williams, Goss. Yeah, there's been a number of really good guards that have come through. Uh, Josh Perkins, Kevin Pangos are a couple other guys that come to, men, to mind in, in recent years. But, you know, when you look at his year a season ago, I, I thought he had a great freshman year learning under Andrew Nemart. Then it becomes different as Malachi Smith knocks down the three. When the responsibility is placed on your shoulders, I thought, or I think, that Hickman has showed tremendous growth throughout the season. 
All right, Dan Dickow is considered among the Gonzaga greats. He's disqualified from this team because he made the list. So <laughs> these are your top five. Blake Stepp might surprise some people, except the people that watched him play. He was as good a guard as comes out has come out of this program. He unfortunately battled injuries, but Kisford is perfect example of player development in this program Holmgren how can you have a team without him on it I'm putting him in at my three and then Timmy he epitomizes what a Gonzaga Bulldog is DeMontis Sabonis as good an interior player as you're going to find that bench alone on the bottom would win plenty of games though in, in their own right Rashir Bolton with a three there can we let's revisit that just because there might be some people say wait a minute <laughs> oh, i'm sure there's so many good players that you could choose from but with my team you've got shooting with step and kispert holmgren interior scoring with timmy and sabonis now did, did you tell your buddy adam morrison that i mean that's what actually <laughs> i knew i was going to get pushed back on somebody i will take the fall for that one he should be on that team as well maybe off the bench but holy cow how did i miss mo off that i talk with him each and every day not every day but each week maybe because he's a, he's currently a gonzaga broadcaster there you go we're both disqualified mo i'm looking across the way at you mo i apologize i apologize we host a podcast each week called Gonzaga Nation SI where we talk about all things Gonzaga basketball. I will bring that up and he will probably hear about this and remind me about it. Yes. For a good year at least. Yes. Until next year when we ask you to make the list again. Well if he makes the list I will be left off it too. <laughs> Fair play. Santa Clara right now 16 and 7 and 4 and 4. I mean this is a a team that's had some nice wins this year, still looking for a, a breakthrough win. They almost had it against Gonzaga about a month ago. That's a three. I think the three counts. The official is waving his arms, but I think he's just telling somebody to knock it off. Yeah, they are going to count the bucket. And the basket counts. And it's going to be a foul on Anton Watson. Watch underneath the basket. Good call from the official there. But Kajinski finally gets on track from beyond the three-point line. He's that kind of scorer that once he sees one going, you better lock in on him defensively if you're Gonzaga because he can get hot and get going in a hurry. That's a great drop step, spinning to a lefty hook by Christoph Tilly, the uh, freshman out of Berlin. Well, he only averages two a game, but he's gotten more minutes in league play. Had seven against St. Mary's. They are really high on him. Greg, high, low. Watson the catch. Watson is fouled. All right. Now, you are not on that list. But in a week's time, you'll have your number retired here at Gonzaga. And not only did you have the best hair in the West Coast Conference, <laughs> you were the first All-American, first team All-American in Gonzaga history. Yeah, looking back, you know, you don't understand kind of the experiences that you're in in the moment many times and some of the accolades that come your way. Years later, you, you realize how special some of those are. But... When you think about all the good players that have come through the program to be the first All-American is pretty special to me. And uh, I'm grateful to be a part of a select group that's got their name and number going up. Pajemski, off a, a dead fish off the flange, or the back of the rib, if you will, and it drops in. Look at Pajemski hustling. And a foul on Santa Clara. Look at Pajemski. He, he ended up in the kennel. Well, made the comment, two possessions go after the first one went down. And sometimes it gets a player going. Knocks another one down. Flies into the kennel club. Knocks some nachos over. I think you, you are allowed to go to the bench and have nachos removed from... There's cheese on his jersey <laughs> right now. 
There's, it looks like more cheese is being removed. It's like blood. Hey, you got nachos. <laughs> Get the trainer out here. And look, it, it was a miserable first half for a lot of Broncos. Pajemski's hit a couple threes now. Hey, they're still getting the cheese off of him. Hey, wait a minute. Herb Sendek, look at, he's out at half court. They started the game while Pajemski was still coming off the bench. Salas, it was odd. Greg kicks Smith a three. That's good. I'll tell you what, when he gets his feet set and it's on balance, you can almost count three points, go the other direction. That time, a little sidestep to free up his space. Cameron Tongue driving. And he's fouled. When you shoot the way Malachi Smith does, get your eyes on the rim and you're going to get the defense to react. Slide step to create even more space. Let it fly. That young man has been a great addition here in Spokane. Broncos going to get free throws. The West Coast Conference has five teams in the top 100 of the net. Of course, that's the, the number or the measurement that most mirrors the NCAA selection committee. But what they need is they need one of those teams in the back tier to make a move. Loyola Marymount's 85. They got beat tonight. Santa Clara's 90. They're getting beat tonight. BYU with the win. And the question is, of those of those teams, Loyola Marymount, Santa Clara, and BYU, does one of the three have the ability to make a run, upset a Gonzaga and a St. Mary's, and climb closer to an at-large bid? Pajemski the steal. That's a three, and that's Napper. Tilly. A miss it stays with Santa Clara. The kennel, one of the great student sections. Seven. Boise State right now with the former Gonzaga assistant, Leon Rice, who's had a great run there. San Diego State. And Utah State just beat. New Mexico last night. That is an underrated, undervalued conference in the country right now. Look at Tilly, a little head fake there. The hook is off. Kick to Stewart. Pajemski had the three. It's now nine offensive rebounds for Santa Clara. They're going to climb back in this. They've got to take advantage of those, but also get Pajemski continued open looks. He's got to get it off here. Shot clock is down. Pajemski sends it up. Beat the clock. Missed the shot. This is a much, much better defensive effort for Gonzaga. Maybe the best defensive effort they've had in three or four weeks. Well, they seem connected. They're energized. They're on time with their rotation. Sometimes if, if you're too energetic, you can be early in rotations, and it, it gives up opportunities for your opponent. Timmy shot fake, and a late pass in the clock, and that's in a, a violation and a turnover. Well, it's been both teams have had poor shot clock management, whether it's baseline out of bounds or in the half court. Timmy's got to understand and recognize it. You're only two of 18 from beyond the arc on the three from the three-point line on the season, but you got to let that one go. Justice from the corner. Missed the three. Tilly has the rebound. Stewart, mid-range. He shoots it well from everywhere. He shoots it well from everywhere is right. He has been dynamite tonight. At 22, 9 of 15. Three threes. Strother. Malachi Smith is in. Returns to Strother. He's been quiet tonight with eight points after a career high 40. Sometimes that can be hard to just take what the defense gives you. I think he's done a nice job of just 
being settled with the game plan and not overexerting himself on the game. Tongue is fouled, and for important breaking news, we go to Evan Washburn. Evan? Yeah, guys, it might be getting late, but it could be getting early quick here. If we get to 10 three-pointers, and Dan knows this, the entire crowd, free tacos. Mm. So you're going to start to see this crowd get even louder and more excited when it's behind the arc to uh, the late-night snack. Yeah, and, and Evan, they're right behind us. I know you, you are all over the floor. But you've been perched at, at times near where we are, and the, the fans are, are right behind us. So two more, and it's taco time. And it's good to see that Evan has thawed out from Kansas City, by the way. <laughs> yes. I mean, Spokane's chilly, but not, not nearly what he did. And our crew endured this weekend. That was a heck of a game. Looking forward to the Super Bowl in a couple weeks. This is Jacob Holt in. Clear some space. Missed the shot. Speaking of the NFL and the Super Bowl, Drew Timmy is known around Spokane as being a big Cowboys fan. I'm sure he's got to be disappointed in another lackluster season from the Cowboys. He's growing used to that disappointment, <laughs> yes. Yes. Justice getting around the screen, and that's a foul. <laughs> CBS Sports celebrates black history. It's limitless culture and undeniable impact. Happy Black History Month. I hope you were uh, here when Evan went through the great uh, career of Frank Burgess, the all-time leading scorer. In Gonzaga history. What a pass. That's from Timmy. And that's Hickman. A couple things have to happen there. You have to see it, you have to have confidence to throw it, and then you have to have the skill to put it in that small window. Terrific pass from Timmy to Hickman. Stewart around the screen. Tries to thread the needle. Gonzaga's got their fifth steal. Once they opened up the lead to about 15 or 16, they kept it all night. That's a strong drive by Hickman. Turned away by Jacob Holt. Foul. And Hunter Salas. Drew Timmy, he can score. He can rebound and he can pass. Showing off his point guard skills. The scouts front office who would be selecting him to answer. But I will say this. He's a tremendous college player. I think if he gets put in the right setting at the professional level, he will earn a chance to make a team. And earn is an interesting word. And it's the reality of college sports right now. He has another year and he's probably the, the biggest beneficiary, is the best way to put it, of NIL image and likeness in the West Coast Conference staying here in Spokane as opposed to maybe going over to Europe to play a year it's probably more beneficial financially to stay here in Spokane there are some thoughts along those lines that you're talking about that make a lot of sense he is a celebrity in his own right many commercials here in Spokane that is an offensive foul national player of the year candidate Player of the year in the conference last year. There's some pretty good ones right there. Really, you can't go wrong with any of them. Purdue and Alabama have flirted with that number one ranking throughout much of the season. Jalen Wilson's been coming on strong as of late, and Timmy's just been pretty darn consistent throughout the year. And, he, and remember, this year, He's doing it without Chet Holmgren. The offense has had to change. Certainly the defense has had to change. We noted Nemhard and Holmgren. I mean, not too many programs can withstand two NBA draft picks exiting. And if, if the NCAA tournament was selected tonight, the Zag is probably a four seed. Yeah, with uh, a lot of the different bracketology websites that I've looked at, you see they're anywhere from three to five, but four at this moment in time seems about right. 
Strother. And he's fouled. I mean, there's, look, there are some incredible numbers about Gonzaga and their tournament superlatives. This is their tournament profile this year. But keep in mind, they've been to seven consecutive Sweet 16s. Seven. That's the longest streak in the nation. Since 2013, they lead the nation in tournament wins. So when they get to the NCAA tournament, they win. They have 24. North Carolina and Michigan are second with 23. And you go back to 2017, they've been a number one seed in the NCAA tournament all but one year when they were a four seed. That's an incredible one. Uh, you would trade that resume with any program in the country that has not won a national title. And that's the only thing left for Gonzaga to accomplish. Jemski gets it up and in. And for Santa Clara last year, the Broncos were 21 and 12. They got to the NIT. They lost up in these parts to Washington State. This is, it's a team that you probably really don't want to see in the West Coast Conference Tournament because Justice and Pajemski can come out and hit a dozen threes and you could go home. We've seen how Carlos Stewart can get it going. He has been spectacular tonight with 22 points. The trio of perimeter players for Santa Clara is dangerous, especially in March when it's so important. Brown is fouled by Strother. I'll tell you something that Santa Clara has that most teams in the West Coast Conference don't have. Herb Sendek, to his credit and to the credit of the boosters and the administration down there have a beautiful $38 million practice facility, two courts, state-of-the-art nutrition center, uh, physical therapy center, all of that. It, it rivals what Gonzaga has. But Gonzaga has an NBA-quality facility. That's an NBA-quality facility. Yeah, Santa Clara, as well as other schools in the WCC, have really up to their game as far as facilities, uh, amenities, because they've seen what is possible. Three teams in the NCAA tournament a season ago, this league continues to rise in prominence nationally. That's a lane violation on Gonzaga. And if you, if you think that doesn't matter when a guy like Pajemski enters the portal and takes a visit and takes a look and sees the facility, you're fooling yourself. That's, it makes a huge difference in this sport, especially the practice facilities. And actually, I mean, honestly, in any sport. Well, Coach Sedek was explaining the impact that it has. Without that, players want to take some time outside of practice, get extra shots up, get some extra work. They would have to go look at, well, what time does the women's basketball team practice? When is volleyball? When might there be something else going in? Um, in on the court in the Levy Center now, there's 24-hour access. They can work on their skills and, and develop however they please. The Shot Athletic Excellence Center. Dan Dickow will be getting his shots up when he gets down there the next time he has a Santa Clara game. Justice off the uh, bounce, missed it. Ball's out of bounds, and it's going Gonzaga's way. Bulldogs facility here is incredible obviously they have developed so many nba players that are in the league right now and that we're in the league five and a half minutes left a late nighter here for the west coast conference gonzaga not looking past santa clara one bit the bulldogs are at st mary's on saturday night st mary's in san francisco doing battle bolton off the screen Watson with a dunk. Brown got hit in the back of the neck with what looked like an elbow. He's all right, though. Well, we've hardly talked about Anton Watson tonight, yet he's a perfect 7 of 7 from the field. 16 points, 4 rebounds. He just knows how to play the game of basketball. He doesn't do things that would be a problem for him or create a problem for his team. He goes about his business. There's a term that's been 
around this program for a long time. And it fits on certain players that have had a lot of success. And I think it fits with Watson. And that is he's a zag. And it's hard to define what a zag is. But now that the Bulldogs seemingly every year are drawing McDonald's All-Americans and four and five star recruits, they still need guys that are zags. And Watson is a great zag. Well, it's about the team for him. He was uh, taught at a young age how to play the game from John Stockton in AAU basketball and a great high school coach at Gonzaga Prep and Maddie McIntyre. So he puts team over individual and that is so important for any team at any level to have success. Would you say early in his career, Stockton was a zag and then be, blew up and became, you know, a Hall of Famer once he uh, got to the NBA? Well, John has set the blueprint for anybody that comes through this program as far as how to uh, prepare yourself to maximize your ability, how to place team over individual, how to take care of your body. It's just the amazing the blueprint that he that he has shown and, and on top of that the leadership and your number is retired right it, it, here next week number 21 correct it is I now wait a minute John Stockton is number 12 is that a reverse Stockton it was a reverse I was 12 in high school 12 at the University of Washington in honor of John Stockton as Timmy gets the buck to drop I knew I wasn't getting 12 in Spokane, so they gave me 21. This is Timmy. Wait, so what did you wear when you got to the NBA? I tried to get any variety of a two or a one in it. I was 12 again with the Atlanta Hawks. I was seven at one point. I was 20 at one point. I was two. You name it, I was that number because I got traded so many times. Did you ask the Hawks for number 21? I did ask the Hawks for number 21, and lo and behold, Dominique Wilkins had that number retired with the Hawks. Yeah, I don't think you're getting that one. Probably not. Tilly on the interior. Santa Clara down 17. Ball out of bounds and a timeout. Mark Hugh and the Bulldogs steamrolling the Broncos. Congratulations to Blair and Eric Spitzer on the birth of Winnie. How about that? Gonzaga hot shooting in the first half. Santa Clara was right around 30% most of the half. It hasn't been close since. Double foul, I believe, on Bolton and Tongue. That's an interesting one. Bolton gets caught on the trying to fight on to the top side of Tongue, who's trying to post him up. Not much contact either way there. That should have been a play on. Bolton's talking to his hands. Read the lips there. He wasn't too happy with it. No, we have great audio on the court, but thankfully not at that position. Pajemski, difficult shot. It's been a tough night for him. He's 4 for 12 with his 14 points. Of course, Pajemski averaging 19 a game, third in the conference in scoring. He's second in rebounding. That's how good a, a rebounding guard he is. Watson. He really is a hidden gem. I mean, he does not get a lot of headlines and acclaim. He's just a really, really good player. Justice Pajemski. His man fell. Pajemski misses. Reloads. Misses again. Tilly. Well, Tilly got a foul and a free throw. Continues to expand his game over the course of his four years. Battled injuries early, especially his freshman year, but 
he was a big time scorer in high school. He's kind of grown into being an opportunistic scorer here as a senior, averaging over 10 a game. Christoph Tilly, the three point play. That guy's going to be good in the next few years in this league. Timmy. Oh, he missed, missed a tight one. Makes that one. And has a free throw. Spectacular footwork on the initial move. Couldn't quite finish, but stays with it. Just patting the stats on the offensive end of the floor. Get an extra offensive rebound. Pin a foul on Tilly. But Tilly had a great night. Yeah, 11 points, 16 minutes off the bench. Fouls out. But this is a game like this going against a player like Drew Timmy and in this atmosphere environment, it's something he can build upon. That 11 points in 16 minutes. Yeah, you foul out, but that's going to be a learning point for him. And I expect big things from him the second half of the season and in the future. Now, this was this is Nacho Corner again. Timmy checks out. That's where Pajemski met his fate. <laughs> With a jersey full of cheese. Kozi Akamatsu is in. He feeds Justice, who drains a three. Kishan Justice, a dozen. Hickman, strong drive, Hickman's got eight. Watson with 18, Timmy with 15, Bolton has 16, Strother has a dozen. Those are the double digit scores for Gonzaga. Stewart with 22 for Santa Clara, that's a walk. Pajemski with 14, Justice 12. Tilly has 11, and Dan Dickhouse keys to the game. How are they holding up? Well, for Santa Clara, Stewart stepped up, as did Tilly, but Pajemski struggled tonight due to Gonzaga's defense. Limit Gonzaga in transition. They didn't in the first half, they did in the second, and no second chance points or opportunities for Santa Clara was important for Gonzaga. They did a pretty good job of that. But all in all, a good effort from Gonzaga back in this building after the disappointing loss to LMU. No kidding. And I'm just surprised that Evan Washburn hasn't crowd surfed in the kennel. Justice misses the three. I got an early flight, Rich, so I, I can't um, risk any injury. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And also, there haven't been any three pointers since uh, Taco. Yeah, you put the jinx on the taco uh, euphoria that was building here as if they need another reason to get excited. Well, Evan, your trip to Spokane isn't complete without a trip to legendary Jack and Dan's across the street, one of the greatest sports bars in the country. Dan does not have a financial interest I don't. in Jack and Dan's. I and, of course, not. the, I guess, the proprietor... Uh, just great tradition in Spokane. John Stockton's father. Yes, and now Jeff Condal, uh, John Stockton's college teammates, is the owner of the bar. Listen to you. Look, Dan, it's too late for you for NIL, okay? <laughs> I got news for you. Dang it. <laughs> that, that, that ship has sailed. <laughs> it's never too late to ask, right? All right, 1 o'clock on the East Coast. And uh, the end of the night here in Spokane, Washington. Number 12, Gonzaga.
takes down Santa Clara, an 18-point decisive win for Mark Few after their first loss in forever at home against Loyola Marymount their last time here. They hold serve on home court, and now they head to Moraga to take on.